This is the house of Christopher Columbus, Cristofo Colombo, in Genoa, Italy. Christopher Columbus, the eldest son of Domenico and Susanna Fortenorosa, Columbus was probably born in Genoa sometime between 1446 and 1451. According to early records, he studied astronomy, geometry, cosmo cosmography at the University of Pavia. Records show that he did lots of things. He went to sea. He worked in his family's weaving business. But it soon became apparent that his first love was the sea. It is noted and claimed that in his early years he visited England, Iceland, Ireland, and countless ports in the Mediterranean. There also appears to be some factual evidence that he may have visited ports and islands along the west coast of Africa. This is his side garden to his house. He married Filippa Mofis di Perestrello, the daughter of a naval captain in service of Prince Henry the Navigator of Portugal, in probably about 1478. For some years, Columbus made a living making maps both of the land masses and the seas, insofar as it was known at that time. In time, certainly after much correspondence with people like Paolo Toscanelli, Florentine physician and cosmographer, he began to sense and visualize that the world was indeed a sphere. He conceptualized sailing westward from Europe to the Orient. He had envisioned the world to be smaller than it is. He had no concept or idea that the entire hemisphere stood between Europe and the east. He decided he would try to sail westward to prove his theory. Years of despair followed. Columbus, now a widower, presented his thesis of round earth and away to the east by sailing west. As every school child knows, the fi he finally received support and approval for his mission from the Spanish court. His departure took place from Palos, P-A-L-O-S, in southern Spain on August 3rd, 1492, for parts unknown. The three ships used carried a total of 88 men. The flagship was uh, the, the flagship was decked, Santa Maria. 100 tons with a crew of 52 men commanded by Columbus. The Pinta displaced 50 tons, carried a crew of 18 with Martin Pinzon as captain. The third ship, and the smallest, the Nina, was displaced 40 tons and carried a crew of 18, Vincent Yanez as captain. History tells the story many ways. The voyage was long and harrowing. There was always threat of mutiny and despair of the crews, and all those stories have been told and retold. Nevertheless, they persevered and crossed the Atlantic. Eventually, the morning of October 12, 1492, the seaman on the Nina Rodriga Triana was first to spot land. The rest, they say, is history.